Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at the Datapath Vision E1 and E1S capture cards. What makes these things so great? Well, if you're a retro gamer like myself, 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, all those generations of consoles, this thing can like handle them all. It's pretty amazing and pretty awesome. And usually you can find them relatively inexpensive on eBay and other places where you find used camera and capture gear. As you can tell, it's an internal capture card, PCI Express. It says Windows and Linux are both supported on their website. I've used it with Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10, and have been able to successfully get a pretty easy capture from it on all three of those systems. You'll probably notice that it's not an HDMI capture card. <laughs> Thankfully, there are adapters that work quite easily with it, but it's a DVI, cheap, inexpensive adapters, convert this thing easily into an HDMI capture. You could also do the same for VGA, if that was your preferred method. There's also others that adapt to this. It's, it's a standard port. Something very important to note about this capture card is it does not capture audio at all. So even if you were to put your HDMI signal into the card, no audio whatsoever, it's video only. On the website, the maximum resolution that Datapath claims the card can capture is 1920 by 1200. I've been able to easily get 1920 by 1080 HD. As soon as I've bumped up any sort of resolution higher than that, the card has not been able to accept it. Finally, you can run more than one of these cards at the same time, which is what I did. I had one set up for a video camera and I had one set up for the actual console when I was trying to capture it into the computer. So where can you purchase these things? Well, you kind of got to get a little bit lucky on eBay. The E1S is sometimes slightly more expensive. And the only difference with the E1S is that it's a slightly higher bit rate. If you're using these for streaming, I have not seen any sort of difference in the picture quality. If you are trying to get a really high quality capture of your gameplay or from a camera, you may wanna to try to just stay patient and look out for the E1S. But truthfully, to my eye, I'm not an expert in any of this. I didn't really see a difference between the E1S and the E1. Something you should be aware of, they typically ship with a low profile bracket. And as you can see the size difference, that's not gonna fit in a typical PC setup. So thankfully, there are some great folks out there in the community who have actually created a 3D printable design that you can just pop that thing right on there. You can print it out with your own 3D printer. I had a friend do it because I don't have a 3D printer <laughs> and it actually works really great and it's just the, you know, plastic that a 3D printer uses. So why would you choose the Datapath Vision card as opposed to something like the Elgato or even the inexpensive HDMI uh, capture cards that are being sold on Amazon and other places? Well. The real big plus selling point of this thing is that it takes anything that you throw at it. I am a speedrunner, primarily of TurboGrafx-16 games, but I also enjoy NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, all of the consoles of that generation, all the way up through Wii and GameCube. And so I have all of those consoles going through a switcher. I have an Otaku six channel switcher. All of these are sent via HD retrovision cables. And all these are our component RGB cables. So they carry the highest quality signal possible out of the console to something called the OSSC. The OSSC is a scaler. And what it does is it takes the original signal from your NES or your Super Nintendo and it doubles it or it triples it or it quadruples the quality and the size of that image that's being sent. Now with the other Datapath Vision card, I've used this to capture a Panasonic GH5. This is mostly for streaming. Occasionally I do do some local recordings, but I run a podcast. I also stream my gameplay for speedruns, and this thing does a great job capturing HD. As of 2022, OBS is natively supporting this. So you can literally download the drivers, plug in the card, and just select it in OBS, which is your streaming software or your capture software. And you can start recording or streaming literally right away with just a few clicks. This does not capture audio. You could use something like this, which actually splits the signal from an HDMI cable. Audio, video, you can capture using that. It's relatively inexpensive, mono price, Amazon, B&H, other places like that have this thing for sale. If you wanna just go a little bit simpler route, you can run the audio right from your console into your computer using the line in that's on the motherboard. How does the capture card work for HDMI consoles? For me, that's PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Switch. It works great. There is a bitrate limitation to this, so you might find some better quality with some more expensive capture cards. 
I have to give a huge shout out to Bob at Retro RGB and actually the whole Retro RGB team. They have some great information on this card and how to get it up and going. And if you want to spend just a little bit more, but not quite move up to that Magewell area, this thing is awesome because it captures so many different dimensions. But it does have some limitations as you mentioned. The biggest one being that it doesn't capture audio as well. If you can find these things on eBay and you can find them within the $100 range, highly recommend picking up one and see if it works for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you're at all interested in this kind of stuff, I have a podcast called the Sequence Break Podcast. It focuses primarily on a lot of speedrunning and speedrunner type things, but we also cover quite a bit of retro gear and retro games and things like that. In fact, Bob from Retro RGB was one of the guests a while back. So if you're interested in all in that, check out sequencebreakpodcast.com. Thanks for watching.